Hello everyone. Welcome to the course of satellite communications. In today's class, we are going to learn about GPS signal levels. Okay. So this is completely regarding the signals with respect to the global positioning system. Okay. How the signals will be distributed to the several uh, directions, how an antenna uh, takes a major part in the GPS uh, transmission and receiving of the signals, everything we are going to see now. Okay. So, so the GPS receiver antennas have low gain because they must be omnidirectional. That means the signal need to be distributed in the several directions. Okay. So this is a uh, small topic. Okay. So we can easily understand. This, okay. So uh, in order to, so as the uh, technology is wireless, okay, we expect the signal to be distributed or scattered into several directions such that uh, uh, GPS receiver can receive that particular signal. Okay. So this particular GPS receiver antennas uh, obviously will have a low gain and uh, they must be uh, because they must be omnidirectional. That means the signal dis distribution should be in several directions. Okay. So these typical GPS antennas are circularly polarized. Okay. So they are designed in such a way that, okay. So uh, it, the signal will be distributed in the several directions or at the time of receiving of the signal. Okay. The whole complete signal will be uh, received to the particular notch or the dome, which was uh, uh, carefully shaped, okay, sh shaped pattern. So the overall uh, purpose of the shaping of these particular antennas is to minimize the noise pick up from the ground. Okay. So to eliminate or to minimize the noise. Okay. So these GPS satellites generally have an array of helical antennas. Okay. So what do you mean by helical antenna means uh, in the topic of antennas with respect to satellite communication, we have seen several types of antennas. You can go through that topic. So this particular GPS satellite will be having an array of helical antenna. Okay. So that provide more gain towards the earth. Okay. So uh, this particular GPS receiver, uh, we have already uh, talked about particular GPS receivers low cost GPS receivers, which are used for general purpose services and the sophisticated GPS receiver, which were used for defense or the military mechanisms. Okay. So it can be any GPS receiver. It can pick up the signals from around one to 10 satellites at the same time. Okay. But mostly we'll be considering three to four satellites in, uh, in order to establish a global positioning system. Okay. So the signals from the in, uh, interfering satellites are treated as a random noise. Okay. So whatever the signals, there will be multiple satellites, right? And those signals will be interfering with respect to this particular GPS receiving antenna. Okay. So the signals from those particular satellites, which we are inter, uh, which are interfering can be treated as the random noise because of the gold codes. What are these gold codes, C by A codes, okay. Or the P codes or the pseudo codes, you can go through the previous topics, you will understand it uh, clearly. Okay. And they will, uh, they can be transmitted with a uh, low cross relation with the code uh, from the wanted satellite. Okay. Whichever the signal is strong. Okay. That uh, with that particular satellite, the co cross correlation will be done successfully. Okay. So almost around nine interfering GPS satellites represents the uh, worst case in practice, the number of uh, visible satellites varies between four to 10. Generally, what we consider is a three to four satellites, right? Okay. Three to four satellites, uh, three satellites for the positioning determination. And the fourth satellite is to minimize the error, uh, right? Okay. So uh, in reality, it will be like uh, almost uh, four to 10, the satellites between four to 10 uh, will be varying with respect to the G GPS receiver whichever the satellite signal will be strong, that particular satellite will be considered, uh, will be correlated with the GPS receiver, okay, nearby. And that, uh, and three more satellites surrounding that particular uh, fourth satellite or the correlated satellite will be considered, okay. But in uh, practice, we generally consider uh, nine satellite, at least nine satellites will be interfering in the worst case, okay. Now, we also need to uh, uh, look over the signal strength. Okay. So the signal strength also vary depending on the elevation angle of the satellite. 
and the antenna pattern of the receiver okay so what is the position of the satellite what is the elevation angle with respect to that also our signal strength varies while it is receiving that particular gps antenna is receiver and one more thing uh, the gps uh, antenna the antenna which is used for the gps receiver the pattern of that particular receiver a uh, gps receiver antenna also plays an important role to receive the quality of the signal okay so uh, as i have already said these gps receivers generally select the strongest signal among all the satellite signals for the correlation and for processing okay so so most of the time there won't be much more uh, any kind of interference noises or all those things because it will automatically fetch or correlate only the strongest signal from among the all satellites okay so but if at all the sky is partially blocked by the obstructions or a, uh, in that case okay or some interferences occurs in that case a weak signal can be used okay that is the rare case or the worst case okay but in realistic scenario what happens as i have already said four satellites will be uh, maximum consider okay uh, three satellites for uh, calculating the position and the fourth satellite is to uh, calculate or minimize the error with respect to that particular code okay so since gps satellites orbit in constellation of four in which always one constellation will be always visible and ready for the gps receivers to receive the signal which helps in improving the accuracy as well as the position of the location measurements can be taken successfully okay this is how the gps signals levels are determined okay so it all these gps signal levels depending on the depending on the uh, satellites position of the satellites elevation angles of the satellites and also the patterns of the antennas okay antennas used in the gps receivers okay so the ultimate goal is to fetch or correlate a strongest signal right so maximum 4 to 10 satellite between in worst case 4 to 10 10 satellites will be can be attached to a gps receiver but in reality what's happening maximum in order to communicate and uh, communicate with a gps receiver or to establish a position or to find out the position of a particular uh, gps receiver three satellites will be used and the fourth satellite is to minimize the error with respect to the code okay so almost even though we are uh, considering the satellites between 4 to 10 okay mostly four satellites will be uh, considered okay so these are the uh, gps signal levels we are considering okay so mostly if at all there is no interference and all those things okay so a, a strong signal can be correlated with the gps receiver otherwise in case due to any natural calamities or like that if at all there is any kind of uh, uh, interference between the gps receiver and the satellite okay a weak signal can be correlated with that okay again we will be having some sort of issues if at all a weak signal is correlated okay so but a gps receiver can uh, pick up a signal up to 1 to 10 but at the most in the reality 3 to 4 satellites will be working okay if at all one satellite signal is correlated with the gps receiver that is sufficient okay so automatically the other three satellites will be connected which are nearer uh, nearby to that particular correlated satellite and the gps receiver antennas or the satellite antennas are majorly uh, will be uh, focusing on the omnidirectional pattern kind of thing such that the signal will be distributed in the uh, several uh, directions okay thank you